So let's get right to our first question here. And we're going to go, let me see if I can operate this machinery. We're going to go over here to Maryland this time here in the good old USA and speak to Raj. Hi, Raj. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Hi, Dr. Beam. Uh, hello, Kimberly. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you for taking my call. And thank you for um, calling her Kimberly, because when people call her Kim, I have to deal with the wrath of that. So, so thank you, my friend, for calling her Kimberly. <laughs> and how may we help you today? Uh, so uh, I've been married uh, 13 years mm -hmm. uh, with my wife. We have uh, three kids. Okay. Um, uh, due to uh, infidelity on my part, mm -hmm. um, I was asked uh, to move out of the house uh, in April. Um, and so I stayed close by, um, interacted, kind of gave her some space. Um, right around May, uh, kind of an alark, I, uh, I moved back in because I thought that the the, the marriage was going sideways or the, the separation was going sideways and mm -hmm. um, just you kind of move back in to try to salvage what's left, mm -hmm. um, which kind of cascaded and led to a, a host of, of problems and, and ultimately led to her filing uh, a divorce and in the first instance, a, a protective order because she thought that I, you know, by moving back in, that was kind of an aggressive action on my part. Mm. Um, that protective order ended up going away. There was, you know, that the, the judge dismissed it, but there was that action on her part to do that. So she's so angry at you, is that what you're saying? That she's angry with you then? She's, right. Okay. Yeah, she's angry with me, right. Um, okay. And so we're, we are, uh, we're living separate now. Um, the kids are with her the whole time. Um, she's filed divorce proceedings, of course. Um, and uh, I, I, I see them, I interact with, with her and the kids kind of on a daily basis. I see them in the morning. I come over in the evenings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm working on my pies to, you know, to keep conversations limited to mm -hmm. just the kids. Um, there have been a, a few couple times where I've slipped up, but otherwise, you know, when you, uh, say, we talk about when the you say slipped up, what does that mean, Raj? Uh, it, it, well, so there was a time about a month ago where... Um, I was I was talking to her about a, a a new job that I was looking at, and um, we had a good conversation about that. And um, and I told her, look, I'm really working on these issues, these trust issues that you had. But let me throw one fact in there: is that um, initially when um, uh, she confronted me about the infidelity, I denied it. Mm -hmm. I denied it, and okay. um, and. And I, I haven't fully told her the story because once she filed the divorce and the protective order, the lawyer said, yeah. you, you can't talk about this stuff. I right? So I haven't. So, so it made her mad that you told her that you're working on being trustworthy and that made her angry? Or is... Well, no, what it may, no, I think what happened is we had this good conversation. I was working on being trustworthy. I'm working on these issues. And we had a good conversation. And then a couple days later um, – we hung out, all five of us with the kids, and I think then she wanted me to leave, and I, I ended up getting a little upset by that, and I pushed, and I shouldn't have pushed, and that led to like an argument, okay. uh, which it shouldn't have, and I, you know, so that's, okay. that's what's going on. The, the only, the, the only other point I would note is that we have a, um, a custody. Well, I'm slowing down the process, but we have this hired this kind of custody evaluator to kind of figure out how our split should be between mm -hmm. the kids. We haven't told the kids yet. We just told them that we're fighting and daddy's living somewhere else. And so my, I guess my question is, if I'm doing the pies, I'm slowing down this process as much as I can. But I, one, I haven't told her about, she doesn't know all the details about the infidelity, which I, I assume is important to build the trust, to build reconciliation. Maybe. Uh, and two, before Maybe. we tell the kids, is there, I guess my only question is, is a letter an appropriate step in this process or do I just, let this process unfold and you know however long it takes and mm -hmm. what would you want to put to kind in, of come to me uh, what would you want to put in a letter like that Raj? i think what i would say is um you know i would tell her that i've been really again as i said before i'm really working hard i you know on myself and i apologize for this pain that i caused you and i'm you know i'm willing to do whatever it takes mm -hmm. you know if you are so interested and if you're not you know, I understand and I respect your decision. You know, I don't want to come off as kind of controlling to say, mm -hmm. look, before we tell the kids and we, mm -hmm. you know, give up all hope, let's give it one more shot. And but why wanna... would you want to put that in a letter? Why a letter? 
I, I, what, what I'm hearing from talking to other people is that um, the the fact that I keep uh, my mode of main mode of communication is 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 verbal with her, and mm-hmm. if she feels that I'm trapping her in conversations that she doesn't want to have, or that she just doesn't believe me anymore because of all the lies generally, mm-hmm. then maybe a, a letter is a different form of communication that would get through to her and actually give her some time to process it and think about it and come okay. back to it two weeks later. That, All right. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a minute or two. Kimberly, what would, I'm, I'm happy to give my opinion on this as well, but what would you think in terms of this letter? You know, uh, he, uh, Raj, correct me if I'm r- incorrect on this. I'm trying to remember exactly what you said, but are, so you are talking verbally, but you, did you say there was a, a protective order? That that she think? filed it, but the judge dismissed it. Oh, okay, gotcha. She called it, and then when I moved back in, because she said, "Oh my God, you moved back in without telling me," mm-hmm. and but there's and, no and there's no order such as that right now. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Right. Well, you know, I don't mm-hmm. necessarily see that there that. Let me put it this way: there's pros and cons. Um, the first one is, it's you have to before you, if you decide I'm going to give her the letter because I've tried other things before and maybe this just a different mode of communicating with her will be something a little more helpful. Awesome. I think that's a good reason. But if you are saying I'm going to do this and here's what I hope to come out of it, then I think you need to check your expectations. Um, if you're hoping that the letter okay. is going to bring about reconciliation, I don't think the the letter is going to necessarily bring about that. It could bring about some pause for, on her side where she stops and thinks about some things. It could bring about anger. It could bring about a whole host of things that you may not be thinking about. Um, but as long as you are coming from it, if, as long as you understand that and aren't necessarily expecting some major turnaround from it, where your expectations then are going to be crushed, then I... I say go for it. Actually, I'm, I'm going to disagree. Go for it. <laughs> Everything Kimberly said is accurate. I don't disagree with anything that she said. But now that the fact that you know that when she gets angry, she does legal things, such as try to file for an order of protection, and you know that she's already talking about divorce, and I'm assuming that means that she has an attorney, mm-hmm. then I would strongly recommend against a letter. Here's why. If it does make her angry, like when you did before it made her angry, she's going to turn around and hand it to her attorney. And if there's any phraseology, any, any way you phrased something in there in a way that the attorney can use against you, that's what they do. I mean, that's what attorneys are for. They are, they are hired gladiators. And so in the situation that you're describing, of course, you do what you think is best. And Kimberly did give you some good pros and cons. I don't disagree with those at all. But in your particular situation, I think what you may do is just hand more ammunition to a woman who's already upset with you. Understand that it's still relatively new. Remember, it's just like uh, uh, April, was it March, April, something like that, when you moved out? Is that what you said? April moved out, but she filed for divorce at the same time as the protective order in May. And um, well, this is still relatively you know, custody new. and everything. Mm-hmm. Still relatively new, okay, my friend. Right. And because it's relatively new, if you're going to rebuild trust, one thing you have to have, and it's hard to do, but one thing you have to have is a degree of patience. And so um, my suggestion, you do what you think is best. And certainly, if your attorney says you should do something, listen to your attorney over me. I have no legal expertise mm-hmm. whatsoever. But I would think it's going to be a matter of time here, and anything you do that appears to be a push, which a letter could potentially be, probably is not going to work in your favor. And so, again, we always say this, you've got to do what you think is best. You would agree with that, Kimberly, right? People make their decisions. Mm -hmm. We don't make your decisions for you. Mm -hmm. But I'm suggesting in this case that keep doing the things that we teach. Apparently, you are familiar with that since you've referred to the pies. And even though you want things to reconcile, Right now is the time just to let some healing take place. It doesn't mean that things are necessarily going to end. And understand that from our perspective, even if a divorce takes place, from our perspective, that doesn't scare us because we've seen so many couples work it out after the divorce. Now, I know it's scary to you, and I certainly don't want it to happen. I hope that it does not happen at all. But I would advise right here a great degree of patience is what I'm suggesting. Okay? Okay. Can I ask one one question on the pies? Um, uh, I, I've been working on, you know, like I said, I've been working on them, but but given that my infidelity was kind of 
do you know you wouldn't have been able to tell from the outside, right? It's something that she kind of discovered. So I have this like mm-hmm. duplicitous, mm-hmm. you know, in her mind, a duplicitous nature. I agree. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I was in two faced in this. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not living there, I'm separated. We, we interact transactionally around the kids. How does, how does one from her end see that, you know, I'm improving as a person, you know, how, how does, how does she even think that, okay, this guy's changed the trust again, because, to me, I'm the same person that, to her, that I was six months ago before she all discovered it. She she doesn't know that I'm I'm work. I mean, I tell her I'm working on this, but mm-hmm. she doesn't really know all the things that I'm doing. She can't see it because right. we're not. And it's know, one of those. Living there. It's one of those things, Raj, that if you try to make sure that she sees it, you're probably going to blow it, because of the fact that it's going right. to come across as you trying to manipulate, control, whatever. So the, the power right. of the pies is that you, and we're going to explain, I'm going to get you to explain just a second what the pies are, but the power of the pies is that you follow them religiously, no matter how she reacts, because what you really want to happen here is more organic. It's that she finally does notice. And so if you try to push it, it's not going to work to your advantage. Mm-hmm. And, and very quickly, can we, uh, and I'm going to have to go to calls faster than this, but uh, very quickly, can you, for people who are new with us, explain what the pies are? Sure. So the pies are what we talk about at Marriage Helper as the four ways to be the most attractive that you can be physically, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually, physically looking the best that you can for your age and situation in life, intellectually being the kind of person who has who someone is able to talk to Um, emotionally, making sure that you are evoking positive emotions in your spouse, spiritually having a beliefs and values that your spouse sees as being equal to or better than their own. So that's a quick rundown on it. You can actually go to our YouTube channel, watch some of our videos there and find out even more about the pies. But the question that Raj just asked is super common of, well, if I'm working on my pies and my spouse isn't noticing or isn't living with me and is, how are they going to see that happen? And what we always say when we talk about the pies is you do it for you Mm -hmm. because it's something that you should do no matter what happens, no matter what externally is happening in your life. So you do the pies first and foremost for you. And when real change happens inside of someone, you don't have to tell people about it, people begin to see it. It exudes in all of the other types of interaction that you have with people. Um, so that that is the answer, the short answer to that question. But again, if you go to youtube.com slash marriage helper, be sure to subscribe and mm-hmm. help us get to our 50,000th subscriber. We're really close to being there. It's going to be very exciting, but go ahead and subscribe there. Watch through our videos. We explain a lot of that in detail as well. 